Hello! Um, a few days earlier, eight and a half million computers broke because <laughs> um, of a software update. So that prompted me to do a video about backup. I've been wanting to do it for a while, but that kind of spurred me on a bit. Um, I want to ask you a question. If, if I were to take this hammer and your laptop and give it a good battering, and then throw it in the river, how upset would you be? If the answer is um, not at all upset because everything's backed up and I'm happy with the way it's backed up, then stop watching <laughs> and go and do something else. Still watching? Good. Um, also, you might not be happy with using things like cloud storage because of the costs involved, because there are costs, and because it's someone else's computer, if you want to be a bit, you know, paranoid about it. Also, you need internet connections, and it has to sync, and you have to sign in, and there's all that, a lot of things. All the things that you find annoying about cloud storage are, are obviously valid reasons for not using it. Um, so here's something I've been using for 20 years. Um, now, obviously, if your laptop does get mashed up with a hammer, then you can buy a new one. The software that you've got installed, you can just reinstall it, but what you can't get is obviously your personal data. So I've been using this method to back up all my stuff um, quite successfully, and a lot of my customers use it as well because it's simple. It's uh, you get a bit of you get a bit involved with it, so you take ownership of your backup, which is quite important, and and you obviously know it works. There's nothing worse than um, finding that you need your backup only to go to the backup to find that it doesn't work and that can happen with a lot of proprietary software that compacts things and compresses things and faffs around and and it, yeah so this works so you're welcome to um copy what i do and um, we'll sort it out so let's look at the prerequisites the things you need first okay so you will need uh, some kind of external drive. If you've got a desktop, you could put another drive in. It has to be a discrete separate drive. Don't be fooled by some laptops that have a C and a D partition because they are partitions and not drives. So it might be one physical drive just partitioned to give you the illusion that you've got two drives. So make sure, and obviously the best way to get around that is to actually use an external drive. Uh, you can get something like this. I'm not sponsored by Western Digital, but this is just one I've got lying around. They're less than £100. Um, if your data is worth more than that, because that, it costs more than that to make a time machine to go back and retake the photos, and obviously that's worth every penny. Lenovo produced this a while ago, and then I don't think anyone bought it, so they sort of sold them off for like 50 quid. And this has got a network thing on it. It's got a Wi-Fi thing on it. This this is this is just a brilliant device. Um, I wouldn't have bought it full price, but I bought it when it was on offer, and I'm glad I did. The other thing you can do is just use any old memory stick like that. You can use that to, to back stuff up on. Um, the beauty of this particular procedure is that you can do different sizes. You can specify what you want to back up rather than doing absolutely everything. So it's quite useful if you've only got a small amount of data that's precious because that can be put on any memory stick you've got lying around. <clears throat> what I've done for this example is I've taken an old drive. This is a Samsung 860 Evo SSD. I was using it in the Ninja that's recording the screen at the moment, um, but then that started to malfunction and uh, the tech support people there said that I should <laughs> that I should buy a, a try a different drive because I didn't support this one. So I spent 120 quid on a new drive only to find that the fault was still there. Uh, that's another story. It's all resolved now, as you can see, because it's recording, but I had this one left over. So I've got myself a USB 3 cable here and you just plug it in. USB 3 to SATA, they're about a pound, depending on where you get them from, and you plug it in and there's, there's a backup drive. So I'm gonna plug that in now and then we'll do the next bit and work out what else we need and how we need to configure it and then what we go on from there right so the next thing is we'll open file explorer and we'll actually have a look at the drive um, as you can see it's just it's completely empty so i'll just pull that over to one side then on the desktop there's a folder here called um, backup script if you unpack the zip file which is in the description this is what you get i'll open that up and we'll get take a closer look so in there we have um two things a folder that says script and another file called make folders which is a windows batch file because i've got the d drive open 
I'm just going to take that and drag it over. It will copy it onto the D drive because it's two separate drives. And that's the default option. Um, if you don't like the idea of dragging and dropping, you can right click and then do copy and then right click on the destination and do paste. And that involves no juggling and balancing. Uh, I'll open the script just to reassure you that there's nothing dodgy going on. So if I do right click and then do um, edit in notepad, you can see that it's um, a simple batch file with the mkdir command or make directory command, cd change directory, another make directory command. So what it does, it makes a directory called backup, goes into that and then makes five folders within inside that. Now you don't have to have all the folders there, you can edit this, just, if you just want to back up your pictures, you can take them all out apart from pictures. This just speeds up the process of um, making uh, the folders. So if I double click that, it twinkles a bit and you can see there's a power folder there called backup and inside that folder are all the ones that I've just talked about. So I'll go back up and I can delete that make folders thing now, I don't need it anymore. So now the backup is prepped on the backup drive itself. The script, I'm going to copy that folder and then I'm going to go to the um, C drive now and I'm going to paste that to the root of the C drive so that I've got a folder there called script and I'm going to open it up and then I'm going to edit it, edit in notepad and you can see it's in there in front of us. I'll just talk you through it a little bit. Uh, the echo command means that when you type something in it types it back to you, kind of a reassurance that you've typed it in right. I'm turning that off so it's a bit more, you know, a bit clearer. Then it says backing up your files, please plug in your drive. Then it pauses and you've got to press the key to go past that. That's just to make sure that when you're launching the backup you mean it. So you don't accidentally fire it up and it works. You have to press a key for it to actually kick in. And then it runs the commands in turn. So for the desktop, uh, it uses xcopy with e, y, q and m and that command is repeated for every folder and then you've got the source location there's an ampersand there which I'll talk about in a minute and then you've got the destination now obviously if you plug your drive in and it says it's e you can change that d to an e and the way you do that is using find and replace I'll do that in a minute anyway and you can see backup desktop, backup documents, that's the folder structure that was just created. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the C drive again, so open File Explorer, this PC, C drive, and I'm going to go to Users, and then I'm going to click on the username of the account I'm logged in as. In this case, I've called it Dell. So I'm going to open that up, and you can see there's desktop documents, downloads, music, pictures and videos and they correspond to the folders that are created on the external drive now, don't they? But what I'm here for is to go to the address bar at the top, click on it and you can see there's the path. Right click on that, copy it, but I can close all these up, go back to the backup script and I'm going to do edit, well I'm going to highlight the little ampersand and then I'm going to do edit, replace, and it's chosen the ampersand, and I'm going to re replace that, control V, with that directory path that I just copied. So every instance of ampersand will be changed to C users Dell, and I'll do replace all, and you can see that it twinkled a bit, and now the path, so you don't have to type each one in, because you can do the find replace to fill in your folder path okay now i'll do file save and that saves that backup file i'll close it and then i'm going to reopen it again like this and just check everything's correct yep that looks all right now I'm going to make a shortcut, so I'll do more options, create shortcut, I'll just rename that bit and get rid of the shortcut bit, and I'll drag that shortcut 
to the desktop, plonk it in the middle there. Now I can close that and I can close that and I'll move that out of the way while I'm at it like that. So that's the actual thing I'm going to run there. Right click on that, select properties and there's a button that says change icon. I'm going to click that, it'll moan there's no icons and it'll go straight to the um, Shell 32 icon thing. I'm going to choose that rather nice red button because it looks kind of nice. Click OK, click apply, click OK. So now I've got a button that says backup on it. Right, there's one last thing to do. Right click File Explorer and then go back to your user profile folder, users, username, and you've got the folders that you're going to back up. In this case, it's six folders, but you can choose as many as you like just by editing the script. I'm going to right click. I'm going to select properties and I'm going to do advanced. And there's a button there, a tick box there that says folder is ready for archiving. I'm going to click that, click apply, or click OK, then click apply and then click OK again so that that is rippled through all folders and files within that folder. Then I'm going to do the same for all the other files and folders there that I'm going to back up. So I need to tick that, click apply, click OK. So I've got um, pictures, for example, right click, properties, advanced, file is ready for archiving, click OK, click apply, click OK to apply the changes to all files and folders, click OK. And that I do that for all six. Now, if you've got a lot of files and folders in there, the first time you do this, it might take a while to update the attributes. While it's doing that, um, a bit of history. Uh, when people decided to back up, storage media wasn't, wasn't great. Floppy disks weren't very big. The alternative was tape streamers, which held a lot more data, but they were very, very slow. And they soon realised that every time you run a backup, you back up all your data, that's unnecessarily time consuming. So they introduced the idea of incremental backup, where only things that are new or changed get backed up. And that's facilitated by using what's called the archive flag, the archive bit, or the archive attribute. When Windows creates a file, it has various attributes, read, write, that kind of thing. One of them is archive. And when you create a new file, the archive bit is always up, the hand is always in the air, the flag is always raised. So that when the backup software comes along, it can check the status of that archive flag to see whether it's up or down. And if it's up, it backs it up, and if it's down, it leaves it alone. So you get an incremental backup of stuff that's new, and of course when something is changed, the flag goes up as well. So that's, that's kind of cunning, and that's what this script relies on. Um, if you check out the command X copy and do the question mark at the end of it and get all the parameters, you can check through the switches that I've used and you can see what it does. It does recursive, it, does, it doesn't do any prompts, so just check through that. And I'll, I'll let you do that. If you want me to explain it, I can explain it, but it's probably better for you if you look it up and have a think about it. So now I've done that, it chugs away, chugs away, chugs away. It's going to take a while for that to be done. Now, what Essentially what that does is every single file and folder that's in your user profile folders have now got the archive bit status set to sort of on if you like, the flag is raised. So when this script goes into the folder and it does it recursively up and down each folder tree, it will copy everything. So the first time you run it, it copies absolutely everything. So be prepared for a bit of a wait depending on how many files you've got. I had a customer this week that had 322 gig and they wanted this setting up and obviously it took about six hours to copy everything across but as it copies it it dips the flags down it dips the attribute down it turns the archive bit off so that it doesn't do it the second time so the first time you do it it will copy absolutely everything but subsequent occasions it doesn't so now what I can do is I can actually run the script and we'll see what it does. I'll, I'll go into the pictures folder on the on the D drive, which is the backup drive, and I'll just run the script. Remember, it's got a little fail safe so that if you accidentally launch it, it doesn't just go off on one. It says backing up your files, please plug in your drive. So if you forget to plug the drive in, you can. Obviously you won't, but it's just there as a 
a little little catch-all thing so it says press any key to continue so i will so i just press a key and it does it runs each of the batch things and you can see the photos appeared in the background because it copied them across so it's also stopped because it's doing a press any key to continue again that's because when you run the script you might go off and do something else especially the first time it runs so when you come back to it you want some confirmation that it's finished successfully if it just closes and the screen you know just just closes its screen there's always that did it work or not so this way by making it so that it stops and you have to press a key to actually close that back up window you're then able to check what it's done and if you look it's done three desktop icons uh, three desktop files, no documents, no downloads, because those, both those folders are empty on this machine, it's got nothing on it. Pictures, it's done nine files. So you get a feedback about what it's done. So the first time you run it, <laughs> it's going to copy absolutely everything. But then on subsequent occasions, it only copies stuff that's new or changed. So if I press any key to continue, that closes that. And you can see, that's my photo, is backed up. So now I can unplug the drive and then plug it back in again when I want to back it up. So those files are just copied. So they're accessible on any computer. You haven't got to log into anything. There's no synchronization with the internet involved when you sign in. It hasn't got to download them from the internet because cloud storage is great. And if you use cloud storage, I'm not knocking it. I'm not going to criticize large companies that make a lot of money out of it, but you don't need to buy, you don't need to buy it you can use this and it will you'll get a reliable backup essentially for free for the cost of a drive if you do have any questions and you want me to explain something further then just put it in the comments and i'll try and explain it um, there is a link in the description to a little zip file that contains that backup script folder that you see on the desktop um, i can if you're a bit worried about it don't, don't download it <laughs> You, you could be paranoid if you want but this is a script i've been using for over 20 years and this is something that a lot of my customers use and it's completely it, it's very relaxing because you get feedback that it's completed you get um reassurance that it's on a drive that you've got control of you can unplug it so it's an offline backup as well so if you get a file encryptor which a few of my customers have had over the years your data is is not online um, if you've got a desktop, you can put a second drive in and do it that way and have the second drive in there. It's about, it's about having your data in at least two places or certainly more than one place. So that if one bit goes down, you've got the data somewhere else. So having it unplugged and your laptop... Get, so get the idea? Hopefully you'll find it useful. Um, if you do, um, just like and subscribe. If you want to buy me a coffee, that's also very acceptable because I like coffee. Um, and again, if you do have any questions about what I've done here, put them in the comments. I answer pretty much all the comments I get. Um, I'll try and help you if I can. Um, and as ever, thanks for watching.